It's the final Locked on Kings podcast before Christmas, and there's one thing that's been at the top of my wish list for years, and that's Jalen Brown on the Sacramento Kings. Now, in the past, this was more than a pipe dream. It may still be now, but this season is the first time we've heard rumblings of a possibility of the Boston Celtics moving in a different direction, breaking up their big two of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. As soon as we heard those whispers on the wind, I was naturally all in on the idea of Jalen here in Sacramento. But is it realistic to help us figure that out, plus what it would take for the Kings to get Jalen Brown? I have John Corrales, host of the Locked On Celtics podcast, joining me here on today's Locked On Kings podcast. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January through December, this is the place for you, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And today's episode is brought to you by Truebill, the app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions that you don't want or need. And Truebill can even negotiate better deals on those subscriptions that you want to keep. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I've been a Sacramento sports media member for the last seven years. This is my eighth season covering Kings basketball, uh, formerly for Sacramento Sports Radio, now with ABC 10 News and Television here in the California capital. And being part of the uh, the Locked On Podcast Network, one of the best perks and parts of being a part of this network is all the uh, wonderful hosts network-wide for a bunch of different teams, not just in the NBA, but all sports uh, that I have the opportunity to work with and interact with, but especially the NBA hosts that I can call up and bother Every time there are rumors about guys potentially being available and we can talk about hypotheticals of what would need to happen for the Kings to get this player or does this team have any interest in this player on the Sacramento Kings? I do it every single year. I absolutely love it. And there's probably not a guy that I bother more than John Corrales of the Boston Celtics. We've talked a ton in the last couple of seasons about potential trades, whether it was the Boston Celtics interest in Harrison Barnes, the Sacramento Kings potential interest in in Marcus Smart, which we will talk about uh, during our interview here today. And then now this uh, this idea in my head that the Kings could have a small inkling of a chance to land Jalen Brown, who's been one of my favorite NBA players for a long time, in my opinion, is exactly the type of player that this Sacramento Kings team needs. And I'm realistic going into this, and, and I wanted John to let me know whether or not it was possible or not. He's going to let us know of that. Uh, and also, I know that if the Kings are going to make a trade like this to acquire Jalen Brown, it's going to take quite a haul to get the job done. So you will hear us discuss what kind of haul it will take. You'll hear us discuss if it's even a possibility. Plus, like I mentioned, we discuss Marcus Smart. We discuss whether the Boston Celtics have uh, any interest in other players not named De'Aaron Fox or Tyrese Halliburton on the Kings roster. A lot of great conversation here. So enjoy uh, my, I guess, negotiations with the host of the Locked On Celtics podcast, John Corrales. It's the final show before Christmas here on Locked On Kings, and I've been good this year. All I want for Christmas is a Jalen Brown trade to Sacramento and here to either make my Christmas dreams come true or be the uh, the Grinch that shuts down all my hopes and dreams amongst many other Kings fans who I know are interested in the idea of Jalen Brown in Sacramento is John Corrales, hope of the lo- or host of the Locked On Celtics podcast, I should say. John, it seems like every time I have you on Locked On Kings here, I'm trying to help you convince me that it's possible that some kind of trade can go down, whether it's Harrison Barnes, Buddy Heald, or now yeah. Jalen Brown. So welcome back. Let's uh, let's see if we can make this happen. Huh? You're gonna you're gonna uh, make I'm going through my naughty and nice list. I'm going through my naughty and nice list. I don't see you on this for for Jalen Brown. I don't see it. I got my Santa Claus beard on here. Uh, you know, I'm 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 trying to play play to the moment. I, I just don't see your name on this. Who could possibly be on the nice Jalen Brown trade worthy list than I who have sat through what I have sat through and hosted through here in Sacramento? Give us some gift this year, John Corrales. No, see, this is it. It's, it's empty. The notebook oh. is empty. There's nobody. There's actually nobody on the Jalen Brown list. That's the thing. Uh, Interesting. 
the Celtics are not trading Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are pillars of this team. And as such, and you, I've seen the reports out there, people have called, people have asked. There have been GMs and people in front offices that said there are two people who are untouchable when it comes to the Celtics. It's Jason Tatum and it's Jalen Brown. That's not to say that it won't happen eventually, someday. Everybody has the potential to move at some point in, in their NBA careers. But let's start this off with this. Jalen Brown is going nowhere. So, well, man, might as well just end the interview right now, then, because I'm I'm not getting what I want. Hey, thanks, John Corrales. Thanks for nothing, huh? No, we'll we'll explore this a little bit more. And I, t- truth be told, I'm not 100 percent surprised uh, to to hear something like that. Every single year, uh, when teams either underperform or overperform, players either become available or completely are unavailable, just depending upon the context of the regular season. I think a lot of people are are looking at how the Celtics season has gone so far, and I think it's fair to say it's it's been disappointing and maybe surprising. Uh, in some ways. And they look at that and they tend to think, okay, maybe players who at the start of the season for sure weren't available, like a, a Jason uh, or Jalen Brown, uh, Jason Tatum pairing, suddenly maybe one of those two guys is available. And we've heard reports that potentially Boston could be looking uh, to move on from one of those two guys. Even though this team has been disappointing, John, what makes you so certain that they're willing to to see this out and that the it's not the right time to potentially break those two up? Right. I think the past couple of years, and one of the pushbacks I get from Celtics fans is that they've been 500 for the past year and a half. But that that entire time has been the bubble. It's been the short turnaround after the bubble. Um, the the four, the final four teams in the bubble, Lakers, Celtics, Heat, and um, Denver, are spent the, the following year at some degree struggling and having having issues. So it shouldn't be that any surprise that the Celtics had issues that following season. Throw in the Kemba stuff, throw in all that, all that other stuff. I think the Celtics have seen that these two guys, Tatum and Brown, haven't had a full, fair opportunity to prove what they can do with one another. They haven't had the stability on the roster to show what they can do with one another. The whole thing for this season, the entire season right now that Celtics fans tend to hate but it's a big picture season. It's a season that's can Jason Tatum ascend to an MVP level candidate? Can he be a, a first team all NBA guy? Can Jalen Brown be a third team borderline third team all NBA guy, an all-star perennial all-star? If you can get those, those two to, to raise their games to that level, if you see that potential in their games, then you have the potential for something special and you can go and find that third guy around them. And only if it's absolutely positively certain that these two guys cannot work together, that's when they're going to maybe come up with, let's, let's figure out who we move. And at that point, it probably would be Jalen Brown, but the evidence shows that I think when they play together and they're starting to learn how to play together, I think, I think they could be really good. Today's episode of Locked on Kings is brought to you by Prize Picks, the best NBA daily fantasy sports prop game on the market. Prize Picks offers more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator and offers all of the superstar players as well as bench players only recording a handful of minutes each game. Prize Picks offers any prop that you can think of from points to assists, rebounds, threes made, etc. So many stats for you to pick from. And the way it works is you pick two to five players and an over under on their projections and you can win up to 10 times on any entry that you uh, you put in. Plus, it's just you versus the house. You versus the projected numbers. You're not competing against other players and sharks out there uh, that are going to take advantage of you. Uh, Prize Picks also allows mixed sport entries for you to try out. Like if you're betting uh, on a Sunday, you can bet on uh, what stats Tyrese Halliburton is going to put up as well as what you think the uh, a player from the San Francisco 49ers Jimmy Garoppolo how many uh, interceptions that he's going to throw uh in a game sorry Niners fans I had to get that dig in there a little bit uh you can bet on that it's very very easy to do use the award-winning app on both the app store and google play uh, to play right now price picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals go to pricepicks.com uh, or go to your app store and download the app all users uh, that decide to deposit money and play Price Picks. If you use promo code NBA, especially if you're a Locked On uh, Kings listener, you'll get fifty dollars free if your first Price Pick entry scores a single point. That's right, 
All users that deposit and use our promo code NBA will get $50 for free. All you have to do is score a single point in your first entry. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You listen to podcasts for the power of knowledge. You switch to Boost Mobile for the power of saving money. Because with Boost, you get the power of a free 5G phone so you can listen to all of the latest Locked on Kings episodes. The power of three unlimited data lines for $30 a month per line so your family can harness all of that brain power too. And the power of one of America's largest 5G networks so you can do it all at the speed of 5G. With all that money that you'll save and all the knowledge you'll gain, just how powerful will you become? Switch to Boost Mobile and find out. Get a free Samsung Galaxy A 32 5G when you switch to one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save. Boost Mobile. Free phone limited to new customers and one per line. Additional restrictions apply. Offers coverage not available everywhere or for all phones and networks. See boostmobile.com for details. In terms of figuring out what Jalen Brown's value is, and maybe it changes for Boston as they're more willing to trade him later on if they're if they're not as willing to trade him right now. Uh, but any as unrealistic as this conversation may end up being, I was trying to be as realistic as possible in my discussions of the Kings potentially acquiring Jalen Brown by saying this doesn't happen without De'Aaron Fox and probably Harrison Barnes, not to mention draft picks as a starting point. This was never going to be a straight up star for star swap in, in terms of Fox or Jalen Brown. And, and Jalen is one of the few realistic targets out there, or at least who I thought was realistic. Maybe it's not so realistic targets out there that I'd be willing to move De'Aaron Fox for significantly more than like a guy like DeMontis Sabonis in Indiana or a guy like Ben Simmons in Philadelphia. Even uh, Jalen Brown was up there because he's that he's that archetype player, that type of player that this Kings team has been missing uh, for quite a while who would fit in very, very well here in Sacramento. But I also feel like Jalen Brown could fit in very well with almost every team uh, in the NBA. But in terms of value, we don't necessarily have to dive into De'Aaron Fox specifically first as as a main piece coming back. But if the Celtics are moving on from Jalen Brown, like my my conviction in Sacramento is if the Kings are moving De'Aaron Fox, they're not going to move him for an, a lateral move. They're going to move him plus whatever assets it takes to bring in a top guy who's going to be ultimately better than De'Aaron to hopefully take this team to the next level. That's the trade that the Kings are looking for. Is it the same with Jalen Brown? Yeah, I think the, the thought process here with Jalen Brown is if if you were to call Brad Stevens and – wow him with a deal it it would have to be something that just knocked his socks off and this isn't a situation where the Celtics are saying all right we're open to moving this guy let's do something and both teams come up with a a, a structure that in the media we say well that that kind of feels like a win-win the Celtics got this this and this so the Kings got this this and this and, and and we move on and we see if it's a change of scenery thing for both teams that that works out. That's not the case. We're not at change of scenery time with Jalen Brown. And so the the type of deal that would take to get Jalen Brown to lure him away, if we're even entertaining that idea, it would have to be a deal that was so in Boston's favor that every Kings fan would probably kind of hate it. Mm. Or people on the outside the, even the neutral observers would be like, whoa, you did what now? And 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 so this because one team isn't looking to make that deal, you have to you have to wow that. It's just like if you had your car and you like your car and people say, well, I'll give you the fair market value, the blue book value for your car. I'd be like, no, I, I'm not trying to sell my car. Then you have to be like, well, I'll give you this much above blue book value. And at that, at some point there's a number where you go, Oh, well, I got I got to take that. That's the same concept over here with Jalen Brown. So when you say like blow Brad Stevens socks off with a, with a deal, like you're, you're talking about, are we talking about a, a package that would have to start essentially with both De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton, which of course, in my mind, the Kings would never, ever do right. Um, right. in most, most trades, unless they were getting a bona fide, bona fide, bona fide star. Is that what we're talking about here? And is, or is that not even enough in your mind for, for Jalen? If we're looking at, I mean, that would be, it would be De'Aaron Fox. It depends on what the Celtics are looking to kind of maybe get out of it, but sure. I'm sure they're, they'd be able to say, Hey, we want Davian, Davion Mitchell too. Like we want like, you know, something, something that you guys would be like, Whoa, 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 Whoa. Okay. Hold on here. Um, but yes, Tyrese Halliburton for sure. 
you know, I, I don't know. We get into the whole structure of the deal, right? Like, mm. okay, so Darren Fox makes twenty eight million. Harrison Barnes makes twenty, and you know, and you look at um, Jalen Brown, who's in there for twenty six point seven. So he's the guy who makes the least. Um, or I'm sorry, Harrison Barnes makes less. But if you're going to throw Harrison Barnes in, now you're throwing it out of whack. Now the Celtics have to throw something in there, mm. or you have to involve the third team. Then it becomes more complicated. I think the Celtics would be willing to be like, hey, here's uh, Jalen and Dennis Schroeder and whatever, uh, and try to get De'Aaron Fox and a couple of these young guys. Mm-hmm. We want to do it that way, sure. Or some, you know, one of these young guys, Halliburton and, and like four picks, two, two, two picks and two pick swaps, you know, <laughs> like that type of deal. We maybe, maybe the, I think – they'll look at that. I mean, and it it's, people are going to be like, well, that that's asinine. You're being unrealistic. Like, yeah, that's exactly the point. It's going to be an unrealistic scenario to, for Brad Stevens to be like, oh, well, I had to do this deal because you're also ripping up continuity with the mm-hmm. Celtics. You're spending all this time trying to get Jalen and Jason to work together. And now you're throwing a whole new team. You're, you're changing the direction of the franchise. You're bringing in guys Okay, if you bring in De'Aaron Fox, what do you do with Marcus Smart? Is he good with going to the bench? If bring, bringing in Halliburton, what does that do to other, you know, how does that all work? Um, that That's a big, big thing. It's a big bomb to throw in the middle of the Celtics. So you would have to get an unrealistic haul. Like I said at the top of the show, Locked on Kings today is brought to you by Truebill. This is an app that you absolutely need to have. Look, if you found a way to exist in 2021, nearly 2022, without any subscriptions, what in the world have you done? How are you pulling that off? Because it's impossible. I have too many subscriptions now. In fact, there were subscriptions that I had that I completely forgot about that I wasn't utilizing even though I was paying for. And there are a ton of people in the world like me who forget some of the subscriptions that they have. Truebill helps you remember those subscriptions, also helps you cancel subscriptions that you no longer want. Free trials renew without your consent because it's a business decision to get your money out of you without you knowing. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. The way Truebill works, it's a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't want, need, or like me, you simply forgot about. On average, people save up $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it easy. Truebill even has a concierge that will cancel the hardest subscriptions for you, go through all that hassle so you don't have to. And really, you can do it all with just one tap. Truebill has over 2 million users that help them save over $100 million. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash locked on NBA. That's truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Well, if it's truly so unrealistic, then I guess I'm going to have to uh, to take it where unrealistic runs wild, which is NBA 2K to make my dreams come true with this uh, Jalen Brown type trade. But am I right, John, in assuming that there is still some pressure in Boston to make some moves, to figure something out, to kind of turn the season around? And then what kind of players potentially would you see available uh, for Boston who they'd be looking to move to acquire talent to get them to the next level? Is Marcus Smart the first one on that block? I know I know. there's, there's of course, conversations around uh, Schroeder uh, amongst other pieces, and there are some young guys there in Boston too that, that I'm sure some teams would have interest in. But if, if Boston is going to try and shake things up, what's trying which players are they shopping to create the turnaround that they're looking for? So I would say, I mean, everybody, everybody's available minus the, the two J's, mm. uh, you know, for, for the right deal. And even Jalen Brown would be available in a, somebody, you know, drugs everyone in the Milwaukee front office and they <laughs> want to move, move Giannis um, or, or something like that. But you I mean, a Jalen Brown trade is you're either packaging him to get the megastar type player, or it's gone so badly in Boston. This is still a few years off that Jalen's in the last year of his contract. And you got to sell him off for young players. And it's a, it's a rebuild this, this year, you know, you start with Dennis Schroeder. You're trying to get a couple of picks for Dennis Schroeder uh, and maybe open up some playing time for one of the younger guys of Peyton Pritchard. Uh, maybe, maybe um, Josh Richardson has played himself into enough trade value where he can be used instead of Marcus Smart for trade ballast in the right deal. But Smart, they like Smart. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, he's not untouchable. And in the right deal, he he could be moved. So it 
but I think they would like to keep him. Uh, he's he's next on the not untouchable, but we would really like to keep him because he knows these guys. He knows the city. He knows the. He, he's very familiar here. Like they love him. So it would it would be other guys first. They they could part with some of their younger players. They probably want to keep one of. Neesmith or Langford probably give another team the choice of one of those two guys. Uh, but there's plenty of salary to, to move with the Celtics and, and some of the, the recent signees. Al Horford, as much as they love Al Horford, it certainly can move. There's Juancho Hernan Gomez who's moved. Like, there's, there's dead salary or, or expiring salary that, that can move in a deal. So there are, there are places to move guys. Uh, so, where they go from here could be could be anywhere. First domino to fall realistically is probably a Schroeder, maybe an Ennis Cantor, cap clearing, getting some second round picks, and then I think the next thing you see the Celtics do is maybe use their one of, one of their traded player exceptions to kind of play as a third team in a deal. So let's say Ben Simmons in Sacramento, you know, there there's a deal there, and and you say well. You've got to take one of these young guys. Um, you know, one of these guys has to go, and the Celtics say, "Hey, we like that guy. We've got a TPE. We'll we'll just kind of take him. We'll we'll just kind of play ball here with you guys and help facilitate this." I think that's something to watch for with the Celtics as well. Well, you, you said a lot about the right deal there, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot here a little bit before we wrap up. But in, in your mind, it doesn't have to necessarily work financially off the top of your head. But using the Kings as an example, what is a right deal or right package in your mind for Marcus Smart just to gauge the value that you think is on him versus someone like Jalen Brown? Yeah, I mean, that's tough. You're looking, you're looking for shooting, and you know, I probably – would want back a, you know, a ball handler. Um, but if, if it could be something like a Harrison Barnes plus, you know, who do you have on the roster that can handle the ball a little da bit? Davion, Tyrese, or De'Aaron? <laughs> Those are your picks. You know? Um, Unless you want Buddy Heald. <laughs> no. Oh, so, yeah. um, you know, look, look. Would you say in, you know, we'll take Marcus Smart as what we think Davion Mitchell can be. And the Celtics would be like, well, we'll take Davion Mitchell as a replacement and think that he can fill the role pretty well. And maybe they go out and get a, a backup point guard after they let Schroeder go and scan, scan the, the market for someone who's passable. And you say, okay, that, that that's fine. And you get yourself a shooter in, in Harrison Barnes. Ah, maybe off the top of my head. It's, it's not the worst deal that you can get. And I think getting Mitchell would be a, a score, uh, a younger guy who's cheaper, who who's tenacious defender, can handle the ball a little bit. Sure. All right. Locked on Kings listeners. You, you heard that now. Let me know about a deal like that from Marcus Smart. If you're at all interested in that, I, I have a feeling it's mostly going to be a negative response to that. Although that does sound like an accelerate timeline move. I don't know how much the Kings would, would fly for the inclusion of Harrison Barnes in the deal, uh, but it would make sense that that would be needed to, to convince the Celtics to, to make that kind of move. Um, but that does in terms of Davion Mitchell turning Davion uh, and his potential into Marcus Smart, which might be basically his ceiling or the type of player that he is an accelerate timeline move that could potentially make sense uh, for the Kings. I don't think I make that deal, but I'm interested to hear what Locked on Kings listeners and, and Kings fans think about that. But ultimately, John Corrales, you've ruined my Christmas again. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you for shutting down the hopes and dreams of Jalen Brown in Sacramento for year after year. We'll try again next year. I, you know, let's make it a tradition. Let's, <laughs> we'll, we'll be back here next December 20-something, and you can ask me about trading for Jason Tatum. Yep, and I'll just get coal in my stocking and move on with my life. John, you're the best. Thank you so much for all that you do uh, covering the Boston Celtics. Appreciate you being uh, realistic and candid with what's going on. Uh, and uh, hey, maybe maybe I'll get through one year, or if there ever becomes a time, if we ever do get to that point that, man, things just can't happen and things just can't work between uh, Tatum and Brown in Boston, you best believe I'll be knocking on your door for another interview here. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. 
Well, I guess my dreams of Jalen Brown to Sacramento are going to have to be put off for another Christmas. Hey, maybe it is still possible, but it sounds like, according to John, the possibilities are less than 1%. But I'll continue to hold out hope. I had a, a feeling going in that that's the way the conversation was going to go. And try, uh, truth be told, as, as much fun as it is to speculate about it, and like I said, I'm not completely giving up all hope, but as fun as it is to, to speculate about it, it's also good to have a dose of reality. And it sounds like the reality is that even with the Boston Celtics under performing they are not going to be moving Jalen Brown unless it's a deal that absolutely blows their socks off and I don't know if the Kings have enough that they're willing to give up to blow uh the the socks off of Brad Stevens and the Boston Celtics so maybe Jalen Brown to Sacramento isn't going to happen but there are other deals of course out there that could happen if you missed my conversation earlier in the week with Serena Winters of the Locked on 76ers podcast we talk about the possibility of a Ben Simmons trade I still think even though Jason Anderson reported uh, that the Kings aren't interested in in what the Indiana Pacers have I still think there could be a market out there for DeMontis Sabonis coming to Sacramento uh, the Kings are going to be involved in lots of conversations and lots of rumors and if for some reason the Jalen Brown rumors do start to pick up a little bit if at all I expect Monty McNair and the Kings to be involved in those as well now I want to hear your thoughts are you disappointed as I am to hear Jalen Brown not available are you not surprised uh, by that what would you be willing to give up to convince the Celtics to bring Jalen to Sacramento are there other names out there that I haven't talked about that you'd like to see the Kings target and maybe I can get that respective team's locked on host here on locked on Kings uh, in the future as we get closer to the trade deadline let me know at Matt George Sack on Twitter you can email me Matt George Sports at gmail.com or leave your thoughts down in the YouTube comment section down below. This is our last show before Christmas, so I want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, great time with your families, great time with your friends. Hope you get all the gifts uh, that you're wanting and and just have a great holiday season. I mean, we all deserve it after the uh, the couple of years that we have had. I'm so thankful uh, for another Christmas here on the Locked On Kings podcast, another Christmas that I get to celebrate with all you Sacramento Kings fans out there, loyal Locked On Kings listeners. Hard to believe uh, that Locked On Kings has, has lasted this long and I've been a part of it this long and it's only getting better. The numbers continue to go up year after year and I'm very excited for a, another successful year in 2022 and beyond. So thank you for your support. Have a very Merry Christmas and I will talk to you next time. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.